Good morning. Subhakar. Salam. Jai Masidi. I am Sarah Gill, vicar of the United Benefits of St. Stephen's with St. James Church in Blackburn. A warm welcome to the members of the diocesan vocations team and audience who are taking part in the service. In our diocese, the month of May is dedicated to celebrate the way God has called different people in their different circumstances to serve him. Short videos have been released each day during the month of May, sharing the stories of lay and ordained people called by God to serve in the Church of God with their different gifts and talents. Our service today will focus on the vocation and our discipleship. Let us pray. Lord, as you called your disciples, call us now. Open our ears to listen to your calling. Open our eyes to see you. Open our hearts to love you. Open our hearts to your love. Help us to hear you, to experience your presence with us, and to love you. And loving you, let us serve you, our servant king. Amen. Learn how to 
to serve And in our lives and throne him Each other's needs to prefer Let us remain quiet for a moment as we come with contrite and broken heart to confess our sins. We are often slow to follow the example of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We often fail to be known as Christ's disciples. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We often fail to walk the way of the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Collect. Almighty God, you have entrusted to your church a share in the ministry of your Son, a great High Priest. Inspire by your Holy Spirit the hearts of many to offer themselves for the ministry of your church, that strengthened by his power, they may work for the increase of your kingdom and set forward the eternal praise of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We are going to watch some vocational videos. Hi, I'm Johnny Weisingly, and this is part of my story. I didn't grow up in a Christian home, but became a follower of Jesus as an adult. And I was about a year on into my Christian journey when the Lord first planted a seed of me considering going into pastoral ministry. I remember very clearly I was listening to a series of talks on 1 Corinthians 15, that great chapter about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and how it concludes um, encouraging us that our labour in the Lord is not in vain. Well it took uh, many years um, before I first began to explore that calling um, seriously but here I am today. What's your story? Knock, knock. Who's there? Gloria. Gloria who? Gloria Birdsall, a child of God. And that's because Jesus died on a cross to save me, to save us, to save the world. I, Gloria Birdsall, went from darkness to light. And from there, the change was made, a perfect change for me so that I can be a part of this world, testifying that Jesus is real, is a living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So, that's a little bit of my story. Come on, what's your story? From who is God to I know my God, from Jesus, just an ordinary person, Jesus my Saviour, from being ordinary to being equipped. Hello, my name is Cornelius Huster. I'm an ALM at St. Paul's Church, Blackpool. I was born and raised in Pakistan and came to this country three years ago. 
I am a Christian by birth, but I only knew God as an ultimate authority and autonomous power, and similarly Jesus was just an arrangement for me. However, my church nourished me in my spiritual growth and reintroduced to me to God as our Father, and now I am in a relationship with God and He is my loving and magnanimous Father. And Jesus, his Son, is my personal Savior, and the Holy Spirit as my strength that has enabled me to become a disciple. Well, that's my story. What is yours? I'm Saragil from Pakistan. I'm vicar of the United Benefits of St. Stephen's with St. James Church, Blackburn. I started my journey with Jesus at the age of 14. I was a Bible teacher in Pakistan for six years. In 2002 and then in 2006, I was invited by then the Diocese of Bradford as a volunteer to strengthen the cross-cultural mission and ministry in Bradford. During this time, I felt called to the ordained ministry and became priest in 2011. The Bible and prayers are the source of my daily spiritual and ministerial nurturing. So what is your story?
we now have our Bible readings. The reading from the book of Acts is read by the Reverend Joanne and the Gospel reading is read by an ordinant, Sean. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16 and beginning at verse 9. During the night Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen this vision, we immediately say, set over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothraki, the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshipper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart eagerly to listen to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptised, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my word. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I'm still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you will have rejoiced, because I'm going to the Father. And the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place so that when it takes place, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Urdu worship song is a reminder what Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest.
are delighted to welcome the Reverend Nick McKee, who is the Diocesan Director of Vocations. Good morning. It's lovely to be with you again for our Diocesan Multilingual Service. I wonder if you ever stop and think about how others perceive you, how they um, receive the ways in which you interact with them and with the world around you. I like to think that the way that people experience me most of the time is as a pretty positive, hope-filled person. And yet even for a positive, hopeful person like me, there's no denying that we live in a troubled world. We have war in Europe once again, as Russia has invaded Ukraine. And I find Jesus' words in our second reading, in our gospel reading, very stark and challenging in the light of that war. Jesus says, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. We all long for peace. We all need peace. And yet peace is shattered by the war that the people of Ukraine find themselves experiencing and how that's spilling over into other places and the impact it's having on so many people's lives far, far away from the battlefield. They long for peace, but find themselves impacted by conflict. And apart from the realities of war, there is trouble in our communities. Far too many young people fall victim to knife crime. Drug and alcohol addiction takes its toll across all of our communities. The vulnerable are neglected and exploited. All these people need peace. To them and to us, Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Elsewhere, Jesus once said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. This broken world needs peacemakers who bring the peace that God gives to others into the world. Who might these peacemakers be? Who might take the good news of Jesus to a world in need that it may know the peace that only Jesus can bring? Well, earlier this week, I was in Blackburn in the centre of town and I, I was standing under the statue of Queen Victoria. And if we ask the Victorians who might take the good news of Jesus to a world in need, they would say, well, white, well-educated men. And yet, in our reading from Acts this morning, we hear something that flies in the face of that Victorian nonsense. In our reading from Acts, we hear how a Middle Eastern Jew called Paul brought the good news of Jesus to Europe. Let that rest with us for a moment. The good news of the peace of God that is available to the world in Jesus Christ arrived in Europe from the Middle East, brought to Europe by a Middle Eastern man. God called Middle Eastern Paul to Macedonia so that Europeans like me might know the peace of Jesus in our lives. And Paul's first success wasn't much to the disappointment, I'm sure, of Victorian men, uh, a man, but was in fact a woman, Lydia. And as Lydia came to faith in Jesus and knew his peace in her life, she shared that faith with her whole household, and they were all baptised. At the moment, in the Diocese of Blackburn, we're um, running a vocations awareness campaign called What's Your Story? All kinds of people are offering glimpses of their story, of how they've responded to God's call, just like Paul did all those years ago, as he brought the peace of Jesus to Europe from the Middle East. In the videos that we have been releasing and continue to release this week, 
We see men like Paul and women like Lydia. There are younger and older people. There are people who are lay and ordained. There are people of different ethnicities and different life experiences, all united in following God's call to bring the good news of the peace of Jesus to a broken world. Many people, many backgrounds, all united in following God's call to bring the good news of Jesus to this broken world. The truth is, my friends, that the Victorians had it badly wrong. God doesn't just call white educated men. God is calling all kinds of people to play their part in his beautiful plan to bring the peace of Jesus to this broken world. And that makes me ask this morning what your story is. What is God's call on your life? How might he be calling you to bring the peace of Jesus to your local community or even further afield? How might he be calling you to play your part as a lay or ordained person in the church of God to pursue the mission of God? They're very big questions. And as you wrestle with them, I offer you three simple practical things that you can do. The first is to pray, to ask our Heavenly Father, who loves us in all of our beautiful diversity and calls us in all of our beautiful diversity to play our parts in his church. You can pray in your own words and in your own language. For me, I would pray something very simple, something like Father God, by your spirit, show me how to play my part in bringing Jesus' peace to this broken world. Amen. Those words may seem very simple, but believe me, they are life-changing because the Father delights in answering our prayers and guiding us to where we can play our part in bringing Jesus' peace into the brokenness of this world. So that's the first thing I would suggest that you do. The first is to pray. The second is to listen, to listen as much as anything else to the stories that are available uh, as part of the What's Your Story campaign. There are all kinds of people. Listen to their stories, how God has called them, shaped them, formed them and placed them where they can play their part in the life of his church. You can find links to the videos on the Diocesan website. If you simply put into any uh, search engine, Blackburn Diocese, what's your story? It will bring you to that web page. Blackburn Diocese, what's your story? Watch those little videos. They're typically a minute or two long and give you little glimpses of the ways in which God is calling all kinds of people to take up their part in bringing the peace of Jesus to this broken world. So the first thing is to pray. The second is to listen to those encouraging stories from all kinds of people. And the third is to seek the wisdom and prayerful support of others by talking to them. An obvious place to do that would be to start with your vicar. You may also want to talk to trusted friends. You may also want to talk to me. And I, I want you to know that I would be delighted to listen to your story and to to help you discern where God may be calling you to play your part, that you might bring the peace of Jesus to your local community or further afield. And if you think all of this sounds too good to be true, let me please reassure you. God is calling in our generation, people who are young and old, men and women, people of all ethnicities and all backgrounds and all life experiences. He's calling all of them to share the peace of Jesus with those around them. He's calling all of us to share the peace of Jesus with the peace, with the people around us. So do not be afraid. Be excited as you ask the Lord how he is calling you to share the peace of Jesus with this broken world.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the example of Paul and Lydia as they played their part in the past in bringing the peace of Jesus to a broken world. So we pray that we might have the courage to step out in faith and to follow in the footsteps of Jesus so that we too may bring his peace to this broken world. In his name and to his glory we pray. Amen. Thank you, Nick, for the inspiring and encouraging reflection. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we received and this we believe. Amen. We come before God to offer our prayers. The prayers of intercession are led by the Reverend Munawar Dean. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions in your name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit, that our prayers may serve your will and show your steadfast love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, help us to believe that we are all ordinary people, made extraordinary through your vision and your power. Take our insecurities and feelings of inadequacy and give us the courage to see ourselves and others as you see us, with gifts and potentials to transform your world and build your kingdom. Amen. Lord, you call us all by our names. Help us to be confident in our own unique identity, to find opportunities to develop our specific gifts and our passions. Enable us to hear and recognize the call of Jesus in our lives and those of others. Help us to find appropriate and life-giving ways to spread your good news in a way which draws others to you and helps them experience your radical and extraordinary love. Amen. Lord, enable your church to be the safe harbor as we search and explore our vocation in life and in ministry. Help it to be the lighthouse too enabling us all to navigate our lives with skillfulness and joy, risking an adventure in Christ as we follow his leading, believing against the odds that we will discover the vitality of a new vocation. Amen. God who calls us all to contribute to his kingdom, take our insecurities and vulnerabilities and weave them through with your holy confidence which always reassures us that we have something to offer as we explore what you are asking of us. We pray for integrity of heart, clarity of mind, and a yearning to love and serve others wherever that may take us, for deep peace about this next step, and for God's light in our eyes. Amen. God of every aspect of our lives, help us to hear clearly what you are asking of us each day, whatever situation we may find ourselves in. You are the God who calls us to stay where we are or to move at your bidding, to seek and speak courageously, sharing your love, defending the vulnerable and bringing dignity to those who have no voice. Help us to sense your presence in, in per perseverance and in hope in those everyday places which can be continuously renewed by your grace. Amen. Loving and gracious God, it is you who call us by name and ask us to follow you. Help us to grow in the love and service of our church as we experience it today. Give us the energy 
and courage of your spirit to shape its future. Grant us faith-filled leaders who will embrace Christ's vision of love and justice. Bless your church by raising up dedicated and generous leaders from our church, families, friends who will serve your people. Inspire us to know you better and open our hearts to hear your call. Amen. God our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people that in their vocation and ministry each may be an instrument of your love. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have entrusted to your Church a share in the ministry of your Son, our great High Priest. Inspire by your Holy Spirit the hearts of many to offer themselves for the ministry of your Church, that strengthened by his power, they may work for the increase of your kingdom and set forward the eternal praise of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, look with compassion on the world you have redeemed by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ. Move the hearts of many to offer themselves for the sacred ministry of your Church, so that by their lives and labors your light may shine in the darkness, and the coming of your kingdom be advanced through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, Lord and Master, you transform the lives of men and women. In your strength, we can do all things and please our sovereign God. Tame our natures, Lord. Mold us to your need, fashion us to your taste, and conform us to your will. Enable us and all who hear your call to ministry to give ourselves generously to your service. Send us as workers into the church and into the world. Amen. Lord, as you called your disciples, call us now. Open our ears to listen to your calling. Open our eyes to see you. Open our hearts to your love. Help us to hear you, to experience your presence with us, and to love you. And loving you, let us serve you, our servant King, Jesus Christ. Amen. We conclude our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer together. You are welcome to join in saying the Lord's Prayer, whichever version or language you are familiar with. I am going to say the Lord's Prayer in Urdu. Ay, hamare baap, tu jo aasman par hai, tera naam paak mana jaye, teri baad shahi aaye, teri mercy jaisi aasman par puri hoti hai, زمین پر بھی ہو ہماری روز کی روٹی آج ہمیں دے جس طرح ہم اپنے قرض داروں کو معاف کرتے ہیں تو بھی ہمارے قرض ہمیں معاف کر ہمیں آزمائش میں نہ لا بلکہ برائی سے بچا کیونکہ بادشاہی اور قدرت اور جلال ہمیشہ تیرے ہی ہیں آمین We conclude our service with a beautiful hymn Oh Jesus, I have promised. Not
tempting sounds I hear. My foes are ever near me. Around me and within, fall of Jesus to me nearer and shield my soul from sin. Oh, let me hear you singing in a sense clear and still. Storms of passion, the murmurs of self will. Oh, speak to me, assure me, to hasten or control. For what speak and make me listen, O guardian of my soul. Oh, Jesus, you have commitment. Jesus, you transform the lives of men and women. In your strength we can do all things and please our sovereign God. Tame our natures, Lord. Mold us to your need. Fashion us to your taste and conform us to your will. Enable us and all who hear your call to ministry to give ourselves generously to your service. Send us as workers into the church and into the world. Amen. We pause before I share the blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be among you and remain with you with your loved ones today and always amen thank you for joining us in this service we look forward to seeing you in our next service on the 5th of june if god is calling you Listen to God's whisper and come forward in faith to follow Jesus. We encourage you to share your story about what God is doing in your life. Remain blessed and be assured that God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Khuda Hafiz.